Good afternoon. Um, I'm Joachim von Braun, Director General of IFPRI. I welcome you uh, to this event on climate change. It's actually the third time that IFPRI calls uh, for a seminar on climate change. And um, the audience is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, the topic is uh, catching on. I remind you that the first seminar on uh, the range of talk topics on climate change was in uh, at the end of March here. And that's where we had the theme, Securing a Place for Agriculture at the International Climate Change Negotiations. Securing a Place. That was our cry to arms in late March of this year. And I believe the place is secured now. Um, and uh, it still needs to be defended a bit, um, but uh, that much achieved uh, by uh, IFPRI and others. Um, remember, in the spring of this year, the whole climate change debate completely bypassed agriculture. Agriculture as a, a, a culprit uh, contributing to climate change, but also agriculture as uh, providing part of the solutions. Uh, to climate change. The second um, seminar was uh, late May. Heading was dealing with climate change, the need to include agriculture and land use. That was already a, lo a lot more uh, research focused on what should be the agenda, uh, especially in relation to mitigation. And um, again, you came out in a strong force. I was actually told by our um, seminar organizers, by our seminar team, which does such a wonderful job in bringing you here and feeding you, um, that the crowd is somewhat changing. Uh, it's each time about 200 to 250 people. Um, but uh, I'm very happy that there is uh, uh, lots of new colleagues coming in and others uh, have gotten used to click on the website and read uh, or listen to the, to the voice streaming or probably uh, this time stayed home because they read the one and a half pages in The Economist yesterday uh, reporting about uh, what is going to be said here at this seminar. But you will, of course, remain the insiders and, and hear from Mark and his colleagues a lot more than... Uh, the actually very good article in The Economist, uh, was, was covering. Today, the cry from IFP is a different one. Um, agricultural adaptation to climate change in the developing world, what will it cost? We are asking for money today, and um, not, for, not for dimes, um, real money. Actually, the figure which uh, uh, has been circulated uh, in the media of about seven billion a year may not be so in order to deal with the the um, uh, adaptation and and uh, uh, not further not further deteriorate hunger in the world um, compares in an interesting way with the commitment made by the G20 and G8. They put. Uh, a figure of 20 billion forward for the next three years, which means about 7 billion a year. Our folks, our researchers will tell you uh, 7 billion alone is needed in order to deal with the climate change adaptation and not to overcome hunger. So we have to talk about much bigger numbers in the future. Um, uh, in view of the climate change threats. Um, I um, would like to introduce the chair of uh, today's uh, seminar, Mark Rosegrant. Mark is the director of the um, uh, Environment and Production Technology Division um, at IFBRI. Um, Mark is just back from uh, a major trip uh, to introduce climate change uh, research results in Asia. Uh, Mark is the leading uh, driver of IFPRI's environment and technology work. And uh, 
Uh, Mark, you will also introduce the colleagues on the panel. I wish all of us a uh, very interesting seminar, and um, this will not be the last time we call on you to, uh, to come to IFP on climate change agenda. Uh, the city listens, this city, uh, and counts. Uh, events like these in town count. Um, it is not secured that um, uh, the legislative process in Senate and Congress on climate change, including agriculture and forcefully moving forward with a climate change agenda that serves the poor and does not further burden the poor, it's not secured that this will go forward. There are too many big alternative topics currently on the agenda. So when you come to IFBE on climate change, pushing for the agenda, you vote with your feet and keep doing that. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Joachim. It really is a pleasure to be here and to, and to see this uh, uh, substantial crowd. Uh, the work we're going to look at here in terms of agricultural adaptation and, and impacts of, of, of climate change on agriculture is, is part of the overall uh, program at IFBRI on climate change, which also encompasses work uh, looking at agricultural mitigation and also uh, much more micro-level work. So what, what we're reporting here today is, is very much, uh, in a sense, an aggreg fairly aggregated, though with some decent spatial disaggregation uh, uh, below the national level uh, for this kind of uh, global modeling exercise. But in addition to that, we are also working uh, at the mi more micro or community level on a number of issues, and, including, for example, the role of input subsidies, not only for agricultural growth, but as, as potential for, uh, as a miti in mitigation of climate change. For example, reduction of fertilizer subsidies that, that, re that promote overuse of fertilizer in, in parts of the world, uh, and therefore uh, excess nitrous oxide emissions. Uh, we're also looking at uh, such things as on-farm management, uh, including things like water harvesting, a minimum and low tillage, uh, and integrated soil fertility management, which again is both a more sustainable way uh, for agricultural growth, but also can result in reduction in, in greenhouse gas emissions. That includes assessment of a very controversial issue now, which is the, the potential for soil carbon mitigation in agriculture. How big is it uh, and can it uh, be effectively tapped? For that, we're looking for also at, at looking carefully at the potential institutional changes uh, for the development of carbon markets in developing countries, which until now have been hampered by uh, uh, high transaction costs in terms of identifying and funding uh, carbon mitigation efforts. So this is uh, very much part of an ongoing program, as Joachim has already said, that where we've been hoping to, and I think have positively affected the, uh, the negotiations and, and the role of agriculture in those negotiations. So let me, without further ado, turn over to the uh, work today, and I would like to introduce first uh, Jerry Nelson, who's a senior research fellow here at, uh, at IFPRI uh, and has been a key leader in our, uh, in our work on, on climate change and agriculture, and particularly in this effort here. Uh, he was for a long time at the University of Illinois, uh, professor of uh, agricultural economics for many years, and joined IFPRI uh, um, early last year to take on this work.